Hi, this is Andre. I want to talk about loop windowing on the Echoplex Digital Pro. Thank you very much to Mark Oswald for commissioning this one. Before we talk about loop windowing, let's just look and listen to loop windowing and see what it's all about. This is a loop I built up off camera. It is an eight cycle loop. What I'm going to do now is re-multiply the Echoplex down to two cycles. Now I'm going to press undo, which is going to window through the other six cycles that we just got rid of. So the idea of loop windowing is that it lets you reduce the length of your loop and then scroll through different combinations of fragments of the loop that you just got rid of. Let's look at that in more detail. Here's another loop I built up off camera. It's the same four note minor pentatonic line happening four times in four different octaves. First one, second one, third one, fourth one. So I'm going to do a re-multiply at the beginning of the first one. So now we've taken what was an 8 cycle loop and we've turned it into a 2 cycle loop. Loop windowing is going to let us scroll through the other 6 cycles that we just got rid of. We use undo to access loop windowing, and if you've seen the undo video, then you'll know that a long press of undo undoes an entire overdubbed layer. A short press of undo will only undo a layer from the button press to the end of the loop. So I'm going to do a long press right at the beginning of cycle one. And you can hear we went right back to the highest version of that four note line which was the last one before the version that we just had. If I do a long press of undo again, we should get the same four notes down an octave. And now if I do another long press, we'll get the same notes down an octave again. Oh, try it again. One more time. And again. One more time. There we go. Now the reason it wasn't always changing when I pressed undo has to do with the way that undo handles extra noise. Just to do a quick recap from the undo video, there's a noise gate in the Echoplex that is designed to screen out low level background noise. What can happen is that if your input signal has noise to it, then that can accidentally fill up the overdub memory queue and the undo queue. So for the times when I was pressing undo and we weren't hearing a change, that's because I had accidentally filled up extra layers of memory with very low levels of background noise. Not loud enough to hear as musical events, but loud enough for the Echoplex to identify as being above the noise gate, and therefore adding into the undo cue. So, let's go back here. Keep undoing. And again. There we go. Now I'm doing long presses of undo, which is getting us through entire lengths. Now I'm gonna do a short press of undo. And you can hear that we jumped from one version to another version right in the middle of that, right when I pressed undo. There we did again.
So what's happening now is that we're getting non-adjacent parts cut and pasted together. <laughs> so what happens when you do a short press of undo is that you're able to take different fragments from the six cycles that you got rid of and cut and paste them together in different combinations. So you have musical events that were not originally happening together that get stuck together in different combinations. A lot of it is pretty random and unpredictable, which I love. That's one of my favorite things about windowing. You can get combinations of your loop that are stitched together in really unpredictable ways. Now, so far, all of the examples we've looked at with windowing have involved remultiplies, taking a loop with multiple cycles and then remultiplying it down to smaller number of cycles. You can also do an unrounded multiply. Here's another loop I built up off camera. It's a four cycle loop. What I'm going to do now is change the insert mode to sus. That's also going to change the front panel multiply button to a sus function. That means that if I tap the front panel multiply, we're gonna get a five millisecond long loop. But you can still window through that. So we're scrolling through the previous parts of the loop five milliseconds at a time. Now by using sus insert, you can expand the length of the loop, which is going to expand the length of the window and scroll through larger chunks. Let's see how that sounds. Let's <laughs> make the window a little bigger. Make it a little longer because we're almost into an even bar of 4 4. Try that. A little lumpy, but that's okay. Let's shorten it. And then if we find something we like, I'm going to switch insert to replace, which is going to turn multiply into a toggle multiply. I'm going to use this as a new foundation. Multiply that out to two cycles. Overdub on top of this a little bit. Now 
let's re-multiply down to one cycle. Actually, no, let's do an unrounded multiply. Now we're in three, and let's window through that. Try to go back to 4-4 four, four now. <laughs> all right so with all that said and played and done let's get to the twist in our story which is that loop windowing is a bug or at least it was originally a bug and a few people discovered it we brought it to the attention of kim flint and matthias grobe and kim said yeah that's a bug do you want us to fix it and we said no don't fix it we love it uh, which was bad news for Matthias Grobe in the short term, because according to Matthias, it was actually much harder and more time consuming for him to turn windowing into a consistent usable feature than it would have been for him to simply debug the thing and get rid of it entirely. Uh, so Matthias, thank you so much for spending that extra time and effort to turn windowing into a fantastic tool. The term loop windowing actually was coined by David Torn and David was using it for quite a while before that term got adopted into Echoplex terminology. And David's concept of windowing had to do with the idea that you could take a loop and contract or expand the window of the loop on a moment by moment basis. Um, and it was not totally dissimilar to, uh, to what has ended up in the EDP. Uh, I don't want to speak for David, but I would uh, I would say that I think his conception was a little more wide ranging and a little more in depth in terms of how you could implement the windowing. Considering that loop windowing showed up in the EDP by accident, <laughs> uh, I can't complain too much. You know, I mean, one of the things with with looping is that we kind of have to be of two minds. On the one hand, you want to try and embrace what's there and learn to work with it. On the other hand you also want to try and have ideas for what could be and where things could go. And then of course there's the uh, probably the hardest part of the whole thing, which is waiting for developers and manufacturers and designers to actually put those things into the hardware. So windowing as it appears in the EDP may not be the full realization that David Torn had in mind or that he still has in mind, but it's awfully nice to have it in the EDP as it currently exists even if nobody meant for it to be in there in the first place. So thank you very much to David for the concept and the term. Thank you to Matthias Grobe for the blood, sweat, and tears in turning that bug into an actual feature. Thank you so much to Kim Flint and everyone involved with the Echoplex software. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, windowing is one of my favorite things with the EDP. And I hope you found some interesting and inspiring stuff in this. Thank you very much to Mark Oswald once again for commissioning this. I'm going to close out with a jam on windowing because I find this stuff tremendously fun. Thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.